Hello, I want to talk to you today about my new book, Just Out, Mad About the House, Planner, Your Home, Your Story, which is the third one in the series. So for many of you who are familiar with the first one, the pink one, that was, if you like, about how to find your style, lots of advice, illustrations on where to go to work out how to make your home really right for you. The second one, which came out a year ago, just before we went into lockdown, 101 Interior Design Answers. And that was perhaps putting all the practical stuff you'd learned from the first one together to really work out whether you wanted wallpaper, how you wanted to choose your paint, what kind of flooring you wanted. So that was kind of getting into the nitty gritty of what we wanted. This one, this one's for you. This is part diary, part bullet journal, part notebook and to-do list if you like. I'm hoping we've wrapped it all up inside this beautiful book. Can you see the gold foil on the cover and we have gold around the edges there and two, I'm very excited about this, two ribbon markers to mark your place. So I'm just going to spend the next few minutes taking you through a little bit so you can see what this book is about and how it works. And I feel that it's really timely, not just because it follows on from the other two, but also I think over the last year when we've been at home so much, we've really begun to understand how our homes play such an important role on our mental health and our well-being. I think for a lot of people, when the lockdown started a year ago, it was kind of the first time they really had to interact with their interior design choices. You know, a lot of people had just got up in the morning, gone to work, come back in the dark, not really taken much notice of what it looked like, maybe felt vaguely dissatisfied with the mess in the corner or didn't really quite like the sofa and didn't think any more about it. And then for all of us being forced to be in our homes all that time, we really began to understand that that sort of pretty corner we might have dressed up to be a desk area wasn't really fit for purpose when you had to sit at that sort of small chair for eight hours a day typing or that we had to share spaces. I think, you know, open plan spaces suddenly didn't work when you've got homeschool and Zoom meetings and two adults trying to work or if you're in a house share and you've got five adults trying to work all in the kitchen or in their bedrooms. So this book is sort of capitalising on that and now taking that understanding and applying it to your own space. And it can be a renovation from the floor up, the roof down, but also it works just if you're doing an individual room, whether that's a rented space or your first time buy, whatever. I'm hoping that this will be the book that takes you through that first journey and you know, on into second ones as your spaces maybe maybe get bigger or smaller, depending on where you are in your life stages. So what's happened, we have different 10 chapters to take you through all the different rooms. Now I've nominally called it second bedroom, third bedroom, but equally I've written about a home office or a evolving nursery or a teenager's room. So it was really just to give you different rooms to write about, depending on the size of your house or the space that you're doing so you can understand. And each chapter has some advice for that particular room. So whether it's in a bathroom, how to save space and save money, how to plan the perfect kitchen, things to think about when you're doing a sitting room or a home office. All, every chapter has some of that in and the illustrations are all effectively black and white, it's actually brown and white, um, because there's no colour. We wanted to keep it very much for you. So obviously, if you want to colour them in or well, colour in your paint swatches, you can. But basically, this is all about your home and your story. And then moving on through the advice, there's always a page of notes with maybe a design tip at the bottom so you can write down your to do list or things you want to remember and a checklist for each room. So in the first chapter, it's things to remember when you're moving house, which is basically just make a big list and take them off as you go through them. And then we come to the six questions. And this was a big part of me explaining in the second book, the green one how to get the decor really right. And you have to ask these six questions. It doesn't matter, as I say, if you're doing a whole house or just one room. And the six questions are who, what, when, where, how and why. And you really have to be honest about them. So who is using the room? And that might seem really obvious at first, you know, oh, it's me and my two kids and my partner. But actually, 
you need to drill down into who those people are. So is that who? Someone who works from home all the time. Who? Someone who needs to work from home. Someone who's only there in the evening. Is it teenagers who just want to come in, lie on the sofa and watch TV? Is it small kids who might want to watch telly, have it as a playroom and keep their toys in there? So you really need to analyse who's in that space if you're going to get it right. And then you need to make a list of what they are doing and that needs to be all of it from tv to playing to learning to having meetings to relaxing to drinking whatever it is because that once you know what all the functions are in a room you've got a better chance of getting it right and decorating it for everyone so that everybody feels like they're part of that room and they belong in that space when is the next question when are they doing it? And this will pl start to play into questions of your decor. So we've all, I've talked loads about if you've got a small dark room, don't paint it white because the white needs natural light to reflect off it. So you might want to paint it, embrace the dark and paint it in a dark colour. That works if it's a small dark room that you're perhaps using in the evening. So it's a TV room or a snug aptly. That's not going to work if it's your main living space and you need to be in there all day, as I say, having meetings or having breakfast or having kids in there playing. So once you start to know who's in there, what they're doing and when they're doing it, you can make decisions about the colours on the walls and the furniture. And also from there on the lighting, you always have to do the lighting much earlier in a plan than you think, because that also plays into where you're going to put the furniture if you're building in lights and again, doing something from the floors up. So who, what, when, where, obviously, where are you decorating? But also, where do you want to buy stuff from? And again, this is really important. This might be, you know, aspirational. You want to buy everything from sustainable businesses made in the UK with minimal shipping costs. You might need something in a hurry that's got to come from a bit further away. There's always a compromise when it comes to furnishing your homes. But it's really nice to make a list of, you know, where you want to shop. And also this plays into your budget because can you buy, you know, that more expensive sofa, which you will sit on a lot and balance it with more affordable lighting. You wanna save up and do everything top quality, but wait a long time and maybe just be sitting on boxes for a while. I slept on a mattress for years before we had a bed. Or can you do it in stages? So that really helps you plan. How, how are you gonna pay for it? Also, how do you wanna feel in the space? And this is the key thing that's come out of the last year in lockdown, I think, is really understanding how we react to colours and then trying to match that to the mood. So there's plenty of people will say, there's no such thing as the wrong color, there's only the wrong shade, but you need to take a bit of time, look through your wardrobe, look through when they're open again, shop windows and displays, and see how colors make you feel. And if a really bright blue makes you feel zingy and energized and ready to do some work, then if that's the right mood for you, put that in your office. I find that really bright colours and high contrast makes me feel tense and edgy and ultimately quite cross. So I'm in my office here, you can see I've got a much more muted palette. They're quite strong colours, but they're much more tonal. And for me, that makes me feel calm, that makes me feel relaxed, that makes me feel prepared and ready to work. So the how is, I mean, all the questions are really important, but don't forget the how. Who, what, when, where, how, why? Why are you doing it? Now, it might seem obvious because I don't like it, because it's not mine, because it's a real mess, but it's also a way, again, of finding out what it is you want from a space. You know, why don't you like that? Why doesn't it work? You know, because the table's too small, the table's too big, the sofa's not comfortable, the paint makes me feel funny, you know, so you get really into those six questions. And in the book, for each chapter, I've given you the space for these questions as a prompt and also to write down your answers. And that works not only as a reminder of where you've been, but also as a kind of to-do list. And then after that, there's always some graph paper, which goes in quite small. I don't know if you can see it there, but we've done it. So there's kind of big squares going to really tiny ones so that you can plan your space. And remember about passages, you need a minimum of kind of 90 centimetres to a metre between a sofa and a coffee table if someone needs to walk past it. 
you've got a dining room table, your chairs are going to need a meter for someone to pull out their chair and stand up. So you need to plan the size of your table according to the space you've got. Unless, unlike me, you have discovered the secret of bending walls. God knows I've tried. So graph paper to do that. And then on the next spread in each chapter is something I've called Love, Lust, Loathe. And this is kind of my version of Shag, Marry, Kill. Or is it Kiss, Marry, Kill, Shag, Marry, Avoid? And this is where I want you to think about writing down for each room the things that you love about it. And that could be maybe the way the sun comes through the window at a certain time of day, and that's a really nice spot. And that's a reminder maybe that you wanna put a chair there and not build a cupboard. And so write down everything that perhaps made you fall in love with that space if you were buying it or anything that you do really like about it if you've had less choice and you're renting it. Because that, when you're knee deep in builder's dust and tears, that will remind you why you loved it, why you got involved in the first place. Equally, write down everything you loathe. That's a kind of to-do list. You know, you want to rip out that fireplace, that wood chip wallpaper, you want to move that door, all of that, write that down in these spaces and you've got a double page spread to write that. And then last is write down the things, again, you want for that space. So you want to paint it in this colour and you want to save up and get that light or you want this furniture or that rug. So you have it all written down there. And as I say, that's why it's part bullet journal and part to-do list. And then always a few more blank pages for your notes. So we go through each room by room, the kitchen, there's advice on planning a kitchen, things you might want to remember, a checklist so that you can make notes on what you're thinking about, your worktops. I've done how to make your kitchen look expensive, which if lots of us are shopping from the cheaper end of the carcasses, the big Swedish shop, there are little tips and tricks, which means you can elevate that with new handles or a worktop or having wooden doors and replacing the original ones and painting them. So you can go through the whole book like that, room by room. And then at the end, the last chapter 10 is called Your Home, Your Lists. And this, I just wanted a place where you can keep everything together. There's also a chapter there, clearing up, clearing out, how to get rid of furniture, where to donate it, charities. I've given you some space for key measurements in your own house, because there's nothing worse than going out and not having those. A bit about shipping, you know, we can buy things on eBay, but how are you going to get those six chairs from Leeds down to your own house? And then an address book, because this I find is vital. I've got my plumber's name magnetised to the boiler. I've got the painter's name stuck in the back of my phone somewhere and everything's in different places. This is your one place. And obviously these days it's all websites, not really actual addresses. So you can have your stores there, your favourite stores, so you can remember what they're good for. And you can also write down your websites as well as the names of your trades. So you have them all together, emergency plumbers, electricians and so on. And an address book maybe for things like energy suppliers. We wanted to include them, but obviously that information changes all the time. So actually it's probably up, you're gonna to have to make them yourself. And a paint directory. How many times have you painted and then you need to touch it up and you can't remember? Or as is the case in my cellar full of half used tins of paint, there's paint drips all over the name, so you can't read them. So that is a really good place to write down which room, what you used, what it cost, and if you want, what you thought of it. And also maybe with testers, because we never write down the names of the testers we used, and then you wanna come back to it and you go, oh, did I try that color, did I not? So that can be a good space for that. And I've given you a few of the eco paint companies and a bit of paint guide on that. And then the budget, more squared paper. I'll leave that one to you, but there's four spreads on that so you can write it down and then a little bit on standard sizes of baths, of kitchen cupboards, of mattresses and as I say there are two ribbons so you can have one permanently on the budget page and one maybe on the room you're doing and I really hope that you will find this a beautiful 
and useful addition and that you know as well as being really practical you'll also look back on it in years to come and remember what you did and where you came from and find it a useful reference for renovations to come so i hope you'll enjoy it you can of course buy it in all the usual places thanks bye